Hello and welcome to Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC. A weekly podcast and YouTube channel where we discuss all things Wrexham AFC from the point of view of long-term fans and new fans. So sit back, put your feet up, relax and let's get stuck in. Hello and welcome back to episode 92 of Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC. I am not well. Again. Again. I don't know what's wrong with me at the moment. We, I think we come across as the illest family in Wales, to be honest, when we're doing this podcast. Yeah. Look, Shan's not been very well this week, uh, the last sort of four days or so. I think she's got a bit of a chest infection. She's bravely joined us. Uh, she might not make the full show. Uh, we're little unsure at the moment. You might see the odd little edit here and there where uh, where we have to cut and start again. So that's only if you're watching on YouTube. If you're not watching on YouTube, head over to YouTube, subscribe, do all that jazz, all that sort of stuff. But thank you for doing it because it wouldn't be the same without you being here. Well, no, I am the wife. You are. You're in the title and I'm everything. In the, yeah. So yeah. So no, it's but we will we'll power on. Good. A <laughs> uh, bit of an indifferent week, I'd say. Mm. Not just personally, because you're. I feel fine. You feel really ill. You'll be ill next week. I'll be. I'll probably be ill next week. Yeah. Um, yeah, a bit of an indifferent <coughs> week. We've had a week off work. Yay! The week off is over. Yeah. Um, Doncaster, <laughs> Colchester, yay! Yeah. Max got got his first league goal, yay! So happy for him. Mendy got injured. Uh, I've got I've got loads of these, so I could go on for Let's ages, not... but we'll stop there. But yeah. I think it sort of proves the point. Quite an indifferent week, I think, uh, for everyone. Um, we'll start with Doncaster. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we were there. We were there. We were there. We, it was an away game where we managed to get tickets. Yeah. Um, we went down early on the Tuesday, stayed in a really nice hotel overlooking Doncaster Racecourse. was really nice. There were a few other Wrexham fans staying there as well. There were, and we had, we had a little chat. We had a chat with one of them, yeah. We, yeah, we did. Um, and it was that was really nice. Ryan made me laugh. He, took, right, he was drinking his beer, and this guy was behind him. And Ryan turned around and went, Wrexham. <laughs> and he was like, yeah. I was like, oh, God. I could just tell. Just that, so. like your dad. <laughs> You'll Doctor. talk to anybody. Well, you, you know, it just makes it more... It's a nice conversation with him, though. So yes. if you happen to watch or listen to us, yeah. hello. Hello. Yeah, I, I, I didn't I, even I, know what your name was. Didn't but even you were ask. there with your uh, young lad. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you've got to talk to people, though, haven't you? You, you know? do. I do, yeah. I, I just think it makes your day more interesting when you talk to talk to people. <laughs> Mum's talked to me all day. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. So that was all really nice. Yeah. Our son came with us. That was really nice because obviously he's off school uh, for the Easter break. So it was nice that we could spend some time together. He moaned at the game. He did. I'm just getting all the nice stuff out of the way yeah. first. Uh, you know, we went for some nice food. Oh my uh, god! Prior, We've eating so much rubbish this week. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I think that's probably why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. And and before the game, um, so we mentioned um Chaz on yes. last week's episode. Chaz is over. Uh, was over from Montana. Um, there was a little group of them that had come over, and they all came to the Mansfield game, which we'd met up with them at the turf and mm-hmm. had a few drinks with them. Um. And Chaz, out of that group, Chaz was the only one. They went to stay in Liverpool for a few days. Chaz then came back to Wrexham on his own. I think they were in Manchester at this point. Okay, he came back to to Wrexham on his own to get the supporters bus to come to Doncaster on his own. We met up with him. That was really nice as well, to, to sort of see him again for a second time. He sat with us. Um, we were right behind the goal. And that's where the the nice stuff ended, really. Yeah, I think it started when uh, Chaz fell on you. He did that's fall when, on me. I think that's when uh... he did. Yeah, he got, he got, he got, he stood up to get up, and he fell. And I tried to grab him, and he sort of crushed my knee against one of the seats. Just to let you know, Chaz, I've got a massive bruise. And just to let you know, Chaz, he hasn't shut up about <laughs> it either. I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah, it's. Um, He's walking fine. It's just a bruise. It is just a bruise. Anyway, uh, the ground. Let's start with the ground. Mm. Go on. Do you, I, I was going to ask what you thought of it. Um, it was it was nice. Yeah. 
um, I think the reason why you liked it was because the beer was served quickly. It was. That was. I think that's a big plus point for me. To be honest, I think it is with a lot of fans. Yeah, you go. We've been to grounds before. Um, let's. I'll just pluck one out of the air. Oldham, right? Okay, I, and we queued up forever. There was no sort of like. It was just, a, it was a shambles. Carnage. It was, it was carnage. It was a shambles. Yeah. Salford was all right. I didn't mind that. The, the queue was, a, they weren't as quick at Salford, but, you know, we got we got down to the front. Um, remember, um, Coventry was pretty good as well. Last Anyway, I, I keep a mental note of how quick you get your beer. So, Doncaster, well done for your speedy beer serving yeah, skills I got, in the ground. Yeah, I got one. I got one before the game. Chaz bought us one uh, at half time. Um both pretty quick. Yeah. So big thumbs up for that one. Um, the, the ground itself, it's quite nice. It's big. It, yeah, it is. The capacity's 15,000 something, something like that. I think it's one of these new styles. It's not that old, the ground. Maybe 15, 20 years, something like that. It's not that old, but it follows this sort of um, format for new grounds that seem to be located in and around sort of retail parks. Remember we went to York, that was quite similar. York was next to a Ford garage and a, and a sofa place, wasn't it? You know, I and, can't and even it, remember. And it had Sainsbury's or Tesco around the corner. It was, it's sort of, all these new grounds seem to buy up cheap real estate on retail Makes parks and, and, and build grounds. As a ground, it was really nice. Yes. I, I, thought, I thought it was nice, you know, much better than a lot of the ones we've been. Um, the only thing with, um, new grounds, they don't really have any character, do they? You know, like some people say character, other people say, I don't know what other people would say, but it, you know, you know, you'd, a I think, lifeless bowl. Who described it as a lifeless bowl? I don't know. I, maybe Tommy Kaus, I think. Did he? It's something like that. Yeah, they, yeah, I, I get that. I mean, I, as a for atmosphere, really poor. I thought it was decent in our end, but yeah, obviously. But yeah, I can understand that comment uh, a little bit. Yeah, I think. football in the library. Yeah, 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 a little bit. Yeah, I get that. Um, but as a just as a standalone ground, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. It's not, anyway, there's no race course though, is it? It's no, but that's got character, you see. Yeah, it's, got it's, got old, it's got some old bits. It's got some new bits. It's yeah. got, you know, yeah, definitely. And I think you're going to struggle to get character and history in something that's only 15 years old, aren't you? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but yeah. anyway, we've walked, we've talked for uh, way too long just about the ground. But <laughs> anyway, uh, un un it was an unchanged 11 mm. from the Mansfield game. Not a huge shock. Nope. I don't think, you know, we played really well against Mansfield. I wasn't expecting any changes at all. Um, and we didn't get that. Uh, Elliot Lee made his 100th Wrexham appearance. He did. At the game, which surprised me. Yeah. Because it feels like it's gone like I remember that. the day that he he came on, made his debut and scored his first goal in his yeah, first game. Two, and... two, he scored two so, against yeah. Eastleigh in his first game. But I remember the first time we saw Elliot Lee in the flesh was uh, we went to watch Wrexham play a pre-season friendly Matt against uh, uh, Nantwich. I remember. And he was warming up on his own. And I think he he sort of, um, his fitness had been questioned slightly before he joined us. And we saw him, it was a really hot day, but he was warming up on his own with one of the coaches. Yeah. And he... Not on his own then. No, you know what I mean? As a player <laughs> on his own. And he what? He looked knackered. And we everyone was looking at him going... What's this? He's a little bit out of shape, isn't he? And um, not fit, not physically. Look at he just look. He was sweating buckets. I think um, everyone was sweating buckets. Yeah, that they day. were. And I, we were all walking round the pitch, and he was there warming up. And everyone was looking, going, "He doesn't look the fittest, does he?" But I mean, look I mean, at look it. at him now. I mean, he is full on box to box midfielder. Yeah. Runs for miles every game. So. I, n I never really doubted you, Elliot, I'll be <laughs> honest. But yeah, it, so it, but it does. It feels like it's gone in a blink of an eye that he's been in. It's it's mental that he's been here for hundred games, but um, it is to another hundred, I suppose. Um, look, I where do we start with this? I knew it was going to be a tough game. I'd sort of played it down in my own head a little bit, but we talked about it last week. You know, in their last five games prior to that, they'd won four of them. Yeah. And they drew the other one. You know, they, they, they were 
they were sort of hitting form um, at, at the right time for them, the wrong time for us. They'd only lost one in their last 11 prior, mm -hmm. prior to that. Um, I think we've probably played a few teams at the wrong time. We, we've, we've played teams that have been poor mm -hmm. for large parts of the season. Which and is obviously reflected on where they are in the table. Exactly. Uh, but by the time it's come round that we're playing them, they they seem to have found a little bit of form. I mean, you know, Doncaster's a prime example of that. Um, Tranmere's another example of that. Uh -huh. Bradford had been really poor and they'd hit a little, a little sort of purple patch of form prior to them beating us at the race course. Um, and we just and Forest Green was another. They they looked like they were you know they'd it, the game that was called off down in Forest Green. If we'd have played them then, that was probably a bank of three points. As it turned out, when we when the rearranged game happened, they'd brought a whole load of new players in. You know they were starting to look a little bit more settled. Yeah. And then we struggled, and then we only got a point from that game. So I think we have been. May, unlucky, but I'm sure there's clubs up and down the country saying the exact same thing about loads of other teams as yeah, well. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, but it, that's how it feels. It feels like we've gone, okay, these, where are these? 15th. Okay, they, they haven't lost in 10. You know what I mean? It, it just feels like we've hit, we've hit all of these teams at completely the wrong time. Mm. But at the back end of the season, I don't think there is a right time to sort of play no. anyone, really. Everyone's um, fighting for something. Yeah, I mean, it would be From nice. On this table, they don't really care, do they? No, but it would be nice to be playing somebody who either isn't in form or has got nothing to play. It's just a combination of them things. They just turn up to get their wages. They don't mind losing by a couple. Because they, they know go that on. they're not going to get promoted. Yeah, they know uh, they're not going to get relegated. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Look, I think Doncaster looked good on the ball earlier on. Mm -hmm. I think they play, from what I've said, very limited to what I've seen them play, but they sort of it sort of felt like they play similar to us. They like when they're given time to. Mm. They like getting the ball down. They like moving it out to the wings. They don't mind switching it from one wing to another. Uh, they're not adverse to a long ball if that's what it needs. And it just sort of feels like our game plan a little bit. They they seemed very similar to us. Is that game plan because they were playing us and they knew that's how we played? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that's how they play. Um, but I don't know how I can quantify that because I haven't really watched them at all prior to watching them on Tuesday night. But it felt like they were quite <laughs> comfortable in that style of play. So it felt like they, they sort of played quite quite similar yeah. to us. Um, we had, um, I'm not going to call it a chance, but an incident. Of Ollie put a head wide after about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we could literally stop right there <laughs> and just say that summed up the whole game. That The head had just sort of just slid off his head to the right. It was, it was nowhere near goal. Um, and th we could have just stopped there and gone, that is, that's pretty much how it's going to go for you today. Um, we, we had another first half where um, was just really poor. Um, we don't seem to come alive in the first half anymore. I don't know for what well, reason I that is. No, I don't think that's for all games. Yeah. Because there has been the odd game where they've been like from the moment the whistle's gone in the first half. Recently? Yeah. Okay. I can't name a game <laughs> because I can't remember. But it's one where we've won. Yeah. Or even actually where we've just drawn. I'm sure it's like at home though, obviously. Yeah, I, so away, I think home and away is just completely different. It's a very different animal, isn't yeah. it? I, 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 I don't know. I think recently I've struggled to see us. <coughs> I, we were talking. Uh, I was talking to a few people, um, <clears throat> Anthony, Chris, uh, on, the, on, the, on the chat. And Who's Anthony? Yeah, not your, not you're not part of this chat. I was going to so. say you're not your Anthony. I thought you were going to say <laughs> no. I don't know any Anthony. Uh, uh, no, and we were talking about it, and um, somebody said, "Do you think?" They give them an incentive of a Vegas trip to get this done. And I said, to be honest, I'd just give them an, a, an incentive to turn up for a full 90 minutes at the moment because mm. we don't seem to turn up for a full 90 minutes. Mm. I mean, the first half at Doncaster, I, I mean, I've, I've made 
uh, have I made any sh- uh, notes for the first half? I mean, we had one shot on target all game. Let's start with that one. Yeah. Um, I keep banging on about you don't get shots on target, you don't score. Um, and to have one all game really poor. Um, their first real chance w- came 40 minutes in. Doncaster's, Doncaster's first, first chance. The cross came in from, well, it was their right as we were looking at the game out on the, out on the left. The ball came in. The lad just stuck his leg out. And I'll be honest, Arthur looked really calm. There's, if that was on target, he, were, he was not getting that. Um, and then that was a, that was a little bit of a, a, a sort of a warning, I think. Um, and then just before half time, another ball into the box. Uh, we had two opportunities to clear that. They, they 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 got the ball in and we tried to clear it. It went straight back to them. Then they put the ball in again. Um, mm-hmm. And Will Boyle got out jumped for the, the the cross. The lad climbed over the top of him, got a header in. It went in. I don't want to blame <coughs> Will too much for that. We'd had opportunities to get rid of that before it got to that opportunity to, to, to give yeah, them yeah, that yeah. chance. Um, Will was a little bit flat footed because, and the lad was behind him, and someone's behind you, they're always going to get the jump on you to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I get, I don't want to point fingers at anyone too much, but <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> I think Bolton could have done better out on the right to to to, to stop that cross the, the crosses coming in. Um, I think Will maybe could have done a little bit better in uh, competing for that a little bit more, using his size, putting the lad off, being aware of his surroundings a little bit without being too harsh. And the third one in the mix, I think Arthur could have done a little bit better. Um, he didn't really even go for it. I know it was quite close in. Arthur sort of did that goalkeeper thing where, you know, when a shot goes in and it's really close, but it goes wide and the keeper's just arms out like that, like knew that was going wide all along. It, it sort of felt like he felt it was going wide and because he didn't seem to make any attempt no. to go for it. It felt like that during the game, when we were watching it, going, I'm not sure, you, I think you, maybe you could have gone for it. I'm not sure you'd have got it, but... Tried. It, it, yeah. God loves a trier. And then we, and then I watched the replay back, and I sort of still feel the same. Yeah. That might be. There'll be loads of people watching or listening to this going, that's really harsh, because I, I, you know, I think it just it was from close in, and I'm not sure he'd got there. I, you're never going to get there if you don't actually dive. And he just sort of fell to his knees a little bit. And maybe it was too quick for him. I don't know. I'm not a goalkeeper, so I'm not going to I'm not going to be too. Um, <coughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it felt really flat at halftime, mm. didn't it? Like the whole the place. Atmosphere yeah, everything and, yeah. felt flat. I mean, we'd, we'd been singing all the first half um, and it just we got to half time and everyone just sort of went, hmm. It was just... Beer? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and it just did feel a little bit sort mm. of like we needed something. I think I feel like Bolton struggled in that first half a little bit, and it's quite rare that Parky makes a change at half time unless there's like an injury or something. He has yeah. to do it. Yeah, it is yeah. quite rare that he goes right. That isn't working. We're going to change it, but he did. And when we came back out of the second half, I went. Was Barney playing in the first half? <laughs> and then it was like, no, he's made a change. Um, like I say, that's really unusual for him. But I think it was right. I think it was the right thing. Because I think yeah. Bolton had struggled a little bit in that first half. And Parky'd recognised that. I think that this was more a game for for Barney. Ryan it. I th- I, Ryan, it. <laughs> Ryan it, I just said. Ryan it. Ryan it. Yeah, just Ryan it. Barnet, I, I was <laughs> going to say. If I went, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I, 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 yeah, I felt it was right call. And uh, he came on. And I think Ryan uh, did some decent stuff in the second half. And I think he did stuff that maybe Luke couldn't yeah. have done. Um, and I think it was probably the right call, uh, if I'm if I'm c- 
uh, um, completely honest. What am I talking about? <laughs> um, you want an instant reaction, don't you? In that second half, you want you want them your a team goal. to come out <laughs> or just start start taking some shots and all this. But two minutes into the the second half, they at the bar, mm. so a weird loopy cross thing, Arthur. Really relaxed Arthur as usual, just looked at it and went, Yeah, I'll just let that hit at the bar. Um, and then it just sort of felt like I think it's very much a it's an it's it, football's a, I'm bored of talking about this game now. <laughs> so it's a bad. weird game, football though, isn't it? It's yeah. like you just need that sort of momentum. And you what you want is you when you've had you put the first half behind you mm -hmm. and then you come out in the second half and you go, Right. It's like if you a boxer, and he's been battered, it, and you come out and you go, just get the first punch in. Yeah. Get the first punch in. Yeah. Wobble them a little bit. Doesn't have to knock them down. Just wobble them a little bit, and then you know, dance around, hit them again, make them wobble even more, and that's what you want, I think, when you come out. And then when they hit the bar, I don't think it was ever going in. Don't get me wrong, but when they hit the bar, that sort of felt to me like they had got the first punch in, yeah. in the second half, and that sort of wobbled us a little bit. And it, I think it wobbled the fans a bit as well, because there was there was like audible groans when that happened. And then I think the ball ended up going out for a corner. And um, yeah, it, and I, it, I just didn't think anything was really gonna, was gonna be, was gonna happen. Did you, did, I mean, did, uh, yeah, I, I, to be to be fair, I did. I thought we were going to go away from there with with a point. I yeah. didn't think that Doncaster were going to create anything, and I didn't think we were creating anything. So I thought we we'd kind of go away that from there uh, you, with at least one point. Would you have been happy with a point? Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. I don't mean. I don't <laughs> mean. That. Like, would you like an extra point now you've lost? Considering I mean, we lost. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. I think. I mean, no, you know, a, po a point's a point, isn't it? It is, but I think if we'd have got a point, we'd have been sitting here going on, maybe we moaning about that we haven't got more um, yeah. because we're horrible like that. Well, you are. Yeah, maybe. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure, to be honest. I think in hindsight, but you can't really talk in hindsight because now we know we lost, but I think a point, based on what happened... Because it was all us, really. After we had a, the clearest chance we had, fell to Will Boyle. Yeah. And I, am not, and I am not for one second saying he was at fault for the for the for the goal. No. But it, it, it was him who got beat in the air for the header. So it was a perfect chance, a little bit of redemption. Cross came in. Um, he was just completely on his own, and mm. he he. he he put the header so far wide for an unchallenged header. It was just like, that was the moment for me when I just sort of sank back in my chair and went, we might as well go now. Because I just knew at that that moment, I was like, this isn't us building to something. This is just... That's as good as it's getting. Yeah. And that that sums up our... That's going to sum up our, our whole day, that mm. is. Um but something a little bit bigger than that sort of happened, really, didn't it? So we had a corner, ball come in, landed to Owen O'Connell, back to goal. He thought, I know what I'll do, I'll back heel it. Great. <laughs> um, he back heels it, no one's expecting it. It goes, looks like it's going in, Mullin taps it in on the line. Okay. We all go mad, I'm climbing over seats. I stop halfway because I see the linesman's got his flag up. Always look at the linesman. And then you, and then you said, "You get back up here now." <laughs> I think it's your, you hurt yourself jumping down there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, but obviously we're right behind the goal. We couldn't really tell whether he was onside or offside. I was like, "I'll reserve judgment until I watch the highlights." Watch the highlights. You still can't tell. Um, because you don't you can't see across the line. You can't tell. The question is is does he deserve a hard time for tapping it in when from the replay it sort of looks like it's going in anyway maybe the spare of the moment thing though you're you're there you're in the thick of it 
you kind of d just your instincts take over and maybe he thought that it hadn't gone in so he wanted to because he ran off and started he did the A thing that yeah. he does for his little boy yeah. so he started um, maybe he just wanted to get his 100th goal at Doncaster I don't think I'm look it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a hard one to take in the sense of if he'd have just left it I think it would have hit the post and gone in right so it's a little bit hard to take at the same time, I wouldn't want him to do anything different than what he did in that scenario because yeah. that's that's his striker's instinct yeah. of going, I'm not sure if it's going in or not. As soon as you, your brain goes, I'm not sure, just put it in. It doesn't matter if you're taking the goal off someone else, just put it in, right? And that's what he did. And unfortunately, on this occasion it sort of ended up being the downfall of the whole situation because it if he did just left it, yeah. it would have been one one. But he didn't know that. We know that. We didn't know it at the time, although we were like well, it looked like it was going in. From the replay, it sort of looks like it's going in because it looks like it's gonna hit the post and go in. He he has a split second to make that decision. And that's what I want him doing every time. Mm. Because do you know what? For every one that he does that is offside like Doncaster there'll be five six seven that aren't. That, that aren't offside and uh, you don't want him to to Second rein you know to rein in that instinct yeah. you want him to you've just got to take that one on the chin because you know there's five or six more huh. that are, are going to come off and you don't want him reining in his instinct but just in case that happens again for me that's that's I yeah, mean I, yeah I agree Good. That, that's uh, <laughs> um, look. It was all us, really, wasn't it? Then till the end of the game, it, it, it was. It, it, it was not all. Not that it did us any good. But... Not that it did us any good. I tell you one thing that we were getting loads of pressure. We were getting lots of corners, lots of throw-ins in the final third. Lo loads of stuff down that end. Um, what confused me a little bit is we've got. A, a long throw machine sitting on the bench. And I just felt... Long throw machine. We have, though, haven't we? And yeah. it just felt like, look, all the pressure's up that end. We're getting all these little throw-ins. We got loads of throw-ins around that area. With 10 minutes to go, it just felt like, just put Ben on. Throw Ben on and let him start lobbing them throw-ins into the box. Anything in that final third. We didn't bring him on until the 93rd minute. No. And it just felt like that was, for me, unless that was, and I know in hindsight you can sort of go, but it, it wasn't really in hindsight because it was happening in real time in front of us. We were getting all of these throw-ins in positions that, you know, your brain instantly goes, wish Ben was there, wish Ben was there. Oh, imagine if Ben was there now. Because it, it's as good as a corner. And I just think maybe... Just an extra ten minutes for it him. It could have done something. For it, us. it might have done something. So that that one sort of, I don't know. It, it didn't annoy me, but it, it just confused me a little bit. I just thought, just get him on there and let's get you know, let's let's start lobbing throws in. You struggling? I'm all right. You sure? Yeah, I just <clears throat> give it, you a little rub on your back. It hurts when I swallow. Does so it? yeah. Uh, look, just to close, we'll get this game out of the way. Um, <laughs> Stephen Fletcher had a, a chance right at the end. Header, well saved by the keeper. I thought he'd scored, to be honest. I was mm. up and I, I thought it was in. Um, but yeah, it, it just wasn't our day, really. Um, we had to walk back to the hotel with all the Doncaster fans. There was a little boy. I had my hat on. Yeah. Um, it's the, it's well, see, if you've watched our lives, you've seen it. It's the cream one with the red stitching badge. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have to take this off. <laughs> I'm going to have to take this off. And I was like, Alfie, take I said, take your hat off, mate. If you're hot, you take your hat off. I mean, it was or not, was it? You're was just hot. trying to get him to yeah, take thought, his hat oh, off. Yeah, I just take your hat off. I know. And um, it was. And it's not that we're, we were ashamed. It's just, you know, when you just, you you've had a bad game and, you know, you've come out with a loss. You don't want to be walking home with a load of Doncaster fans going, no. or any fan yeah. who just won. Golden, yeah, and I just, yeah. They weren't golden as either, were they? No one, no one talked to just, us. There was just like a little look every now and then. It's like, nah. There was like, a, no, there was a little lad walking in front of us, and he just kept turning around, and I was like, yeah, stop, stop, <laughs> just stop. stop. Getting arrested for slapping a Doncaster <laughs> child. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, yeah. But look, put them to bed. 
we lost. You we know, did. and we just got picked. All of the results, sort of, you know, I, just to talk about the other results. Stockport won at home to Wimbledon last minute. Mansfield game was postponed, wasn't it? It was. Uh, on the Monday. Conveniently. <laughs> MK Dons drew three all away at Notts County. Barrow lost. Crew lost, and it just felt like it was a good opportunity for us with MK Don's Barrow and Crew yeah. all dropping points. It was like, right, come on, let's go and win it, put some distance between us and them. And we it, didn't. No, it was just typical, though. I, 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 you know, we were looking at the results on Monday, and I don't think I said it out loud, but I saw, right, they've lost, they've lost, they've drawn, they didn't even play, and you're sitting there going. It'll just be Wrexham now to go and lose because we've got this perfect opportunity to to pull away, perfect scenario. and we haven't taken it. But yeah, it's better for the documentary, I suppose, isn't it? Uh, Kiro Harai said two away games in a row at this stage is my new stress monster. Uh, Doncaster earned that one, I think, no questions. But I'm anxious until uh, the next home game. Uh, and Blair Vanderberg, I will take the blame for the loss. I forgot to put on my Wrexham top. Also, I'll never guess the same score as Ryan again. Don't, Don't because I never get them right. So no. there's, there's absolutely no point. So Colchester, this one's a bit more of an upbeat, upbeat yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um, although for a few, probably half of the game I didn't think it was going to be uh, it's, it's another not turning up in the first yeah, half wasn't yeah it? it was a bit um, so there was four changes yes um, so obviously Mendy started he did start yes <laughs> Yeah, uh, so Barnett, Evans, Mendy and Fletcher all came in yeah Will Boyle out was, was a I was, I was a bit yeah I was a bit surprised about that um, was that I, like a kick in the teeth for Boyle because he did he, like no, missed the opportunity I, at the Doncaster game. I don't think so. I think there's look, boil out. O'Connor came in right now. This is going to be your sort of scenario now. Evans now. George Evans is back. I don't think you can play anyone other than George Evans in the middle. No. Um, and but you you can't really have a player like Tom O'Connor just sitting out week after week because he's too good. He is. But what do you do? Do you bring O'Connor in instead of Cannon? I don't no. think so at the moment because Cannon's playing so well. Yeah. Maybe so, Cannon mucks up, not that he will. No, but, but um, you know, so Boyle only really came in while O'Connor was out. Now O'Connor's back. Look, it, it is a difficult one. And it depends what you want from a defender, right? I think this is the, this is the point I keep trying to make to people. Boyle is very much no nonsense. Yep. Old school defender, Bosch, tackle, header away, um, and clear it. Next. Next. Yeah. Bring on the next one. That, mm -hmm. that and it's just like that. You know, mm -hmm. let's keep doing that. Like uh, for anyone who knows sort of British football, like a Tony Adams, Martin Keown, them old style defenders who are just bang. Don't know who Martin Keown is, but I know who um, Tony, Adams Tony, is. Tony Adams is. Yeah, so uh, old style defenders and he, he mm -hmm. fits that mould. Yeah. And he's a big meathead sort of defender and that's that. You know, that's what he's built his game around. He's got around. his very stunning wife or girlfriend may I just say. Has he? Yeah. Okay. Just thought I'd throw that out I'll there. I'll Google that. No, you I... won't. <laughs> um, and um, <laughs> yeah, and it, it, look, that's his style of play and he's very good at that. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, where Will maybe falls down a little bit uh, is uh, but it's, it's not what you'd really call a ball playing defender. So he's not completely comfortable taking it down, looking around, picking a pass. He can do that. I'm not. I'm not saying. But if you're going to compare that between Will Boyle and Tom O'Connor, Tom O'Connor wins that all day long. Yeah. Because Tom O'Connor sees the, the play in front of him beautifully mm -hmm. and he can pick a pass and he's composed on the ball. He can bring it forward when he needs to. He can find pockets of space. All of that stuff. Tick, 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 tick. Tom O'Connor can do that. Okay, Will Boyle, not so much. Mm -hmm. As a defender, I would probably say Will is better as a defender. Um Tom, it, Tom is very good at defending and he is also very good at all the ball playing stuff as well. Uh, uh, there are going to be games that you need a meathead for <laughs> and that is what Will will come in for. So I, I wouldn't say Will Boyle has done anything particularly wrong. No. Um, I just think 
that it's a case it's horses for courses i always say horses for courses you do. and and in this you know in this instance you want you you know you Phil wanted a more ball-playing defender in there, and that's why he's gone with Tommy over Will. So, yeah, Will Boyle out, O'Connor in the back three, McLean in the, I'm assuming this is centre attack midfield, is it? Central attack and midfield. Yeah. Think, yeah, so we give Leah rest. <laughs> we give Leah rest. For 30 <laughs> minutes. Because <laughs> everybody was crying out and said, Lee looks spent. He's playing too much. He's playing all the time. Um, he's played every game this season. So let's give him a break. We'll give him a break and he'll come back better than ever. That lasted 30 minutes. Yeah, because um, uh, McLean was obviously in a position for... Um, Elliot for Lee's for Lee. position, yeah. yeah. So uh, Mendy was obviously in his normal position. To the right? Left. Left. Do you know what? When I'm looking, I just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To the left. Yeah. Um, but then, unfortunately... he Well, he injured himself, didn't he? Um, or he he went down. Um, he he, he, the, he went to run for a ball. No, no. This was... No, this was prior to okay. that. Okay, yeah. So he'd fallen... Um, not fallen, but he'd gone down. And I think the physio came over, looked at him. And he seemed to get up and sort of run it off. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then he was going... He was going for the ball. Yeah. Which I think had gone out... And he was going to retrieve that ball, and he said he felt it, you he, when he was talking to the he, well, he sort of stopped basically yeah, and started yeah. limping, holding yeah. the back of his thigh. Um, so we think that he may have twinged his. We don't we don't know because nothing's been said. Yeah. But basically, yeah, the the he went off thirty minutes, um, and then obviously Lee came in, McLean. Went back to the back left. To left. Yeah. Um, which you know, I mean, he had a thirty minute rest. Yeah. Uh, well, he's had longer than that. He's had a few, so a couple of days in thirty minutes. Yeah, it it is disappointing. I'm disappointed you know, for Mendy because he yeah, seems to kind of come back, does really well, and then something. So hopefully, this this twinge that he said he had is just that. Yeah. Just a twinge. Just, and yeah. A bit it of, didn't. It didn't look like that though. He had his head in his shirt. Like I think players know. They know when it's gone, oh. and uh, you know, with so few games left in the season, uh, it's it is a big possibility that we're not going to see him again this season, isn't it? You know, so uh, we'll have to wait and see on that one. We'll get well soon, Mendy. Yes, yes. Um, look, uh, George Evans came back, which he is a, a, yes, back in the starting lineup. That's a huge plus for me. I, th I think he, was uh, getting, he, was, yeah. he, he didn't have the best game. I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dress it up. He didn't have the best game, but. Nine yeah. times out of ten, he's going to control that midfield for you. Yeah. And, you know, he did show flashes of, of brilliance. <laughs> he just didn't have his best game, I don't <laughs> think, for me. But you've got to play him. You've got to play him every single mm. opportunity that you've got. You've got to have him in that, that starting line. If he's line. fit, get him on that pitch. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and, um, look, I was a little bit concerned when I looked at their starting at 11. Yeah. They named uh, two six-foot-plus strikers. So it wasn't big man, little man. It was big man, big man. So they had one was 6-2. We had Mullen and uh, <laughs> Fletcher. Yeah, we had... So they're big lads. They're big lads up front. Um, they're down the bottom of the table. I sort of felt like they were going to play long ball after long ball after long ball up to the two big strikers, yeah. supporting by the midfield, then win the knockdowns. So I was a little bit concerned about that, especially with Tommy being in the back three. Maybe it was a situation for a big meter to be in there, to be winning headers. Maybe that's what concerned me a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, so two big strikers up there. I, you know, I was a little bit concerned. And the other thing that concerned me was when teams just start lumping long balls up. As a team, what we seem to do is we seem to get sucked into playing the same, same way. way. Yeah. Um, so they play a long ball. Then it comes to us, we win it, and then we play a long ball, and then they play a long ball back, and we just seem to get sucked into that back and forth a little bit. Instead of taking it down and going, you do what you want to do, lads, we're going to play our game. Uh, so we do seem, yeah, it seems to happen a lot, yeah. that does, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong, Parky's always said he gives the lads the freedom to go and play how they need to play. So sometimes they want it, it. It's a case of you know playing it on the floor. But if there's a long pass, play a long pass. But 
I d- yeah, I just I do worry that we'd get sucked into playing uh, another team's way. Yeah. Um, I think the first half showed us. What did the first half show us? I think it showed us <laughs> that uh, in League Two, there isn't really any <coughs> really bad teams. The, the, the table would tell you otherwise. Yeah, I know. But I don't think the golfing class between top and bottom is massive. No. Um, we, were li- we were off it a little bit, I would say, you know. Uh, but... Colchester looked the better team, yeah. if I'm completely honest. They, First half, definitely. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would say so. Yeah. Um, the, one thing to, to mention is they've made the pitch smaller. It was really, com- it was really kind of annoying me and yeah. like my OCD is that there was like a line, the the halfway line, yeah. and then there was like a bl- there was like a faded halfway line. Yeah, there was the centre circle, and then there was another centre circle, I which know. I was just like really annoying me. And it um, it must have been horrible to play on that pitch. It it, it was it's so the, when they they made it smaller because they had drainage issues. Yeah, and that's why you saw the sand sort of dotted around in different places on there. So they made it smaller to help the pitch drain off and stop it being waterlogged and, and sort of boggy. Um, it made it the smallest pitch in League Two, so it was a lot smaller than anything else that was in the league. What width or length? Both. All oh, right. Okay. So what Wrexham did in training was they made their training pitch smaller. Who oh, did they? Yeah, to to prepare for it. Did I now know? the problem with the smaller pitch is if you want to get the ball down and you want to pass it around a little bit. Um, that's that's fine when you've got wide flanks and you can get out to the wings. Yeah. As soon as you push everything in, it makes it tight. And it mm. did sort of feel quite tight and we weren't able to, to sort of, um, you know, to sort of s- get the ball moving a, a bit. Yeah. But, you know, they'd made the prep for it. So, they, they, you know, it wasn't like they'd... Um, that, that it wasn't like they, they'd sort of prepared for what, was, what, what they were going to see this week. Um uh what was that well, i've lost me i've lost me uh oh yeah so <laughs> they had a header from a corner mm. uh, which just went over um, um in the commentary they sort of made quite light of it going oh i think it was really hard for him to keep down i don't who fletcher no colchester i'm talking oh, sorry. about now so they had a chance i don't think it was hard for them to keep it down i think they just didn't control it well enough mm-hmm. i think that was a really good chance to put them ahead they had another shot from the edge of the box which arthur went down and saved quite well um and yeah uh, the only we had sort of two half chances i'd call them there was the mclean cross from the left hand side which mullin sort of slid and just sort yeah. of skidded wide that was sort of a half chance, really. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that was it. The other one was the Owen O'Connell header, which was just before half time. That sort of flashed wide. Again, a little bit of a half chance. I don't think there was anything too much there. But um, I keep banging on about it, but we had no shots on target in that first half. No, we had not one. We did have shots, nothing on target. We only had 35% of the possession. Mm. Um, Is that just I, in the first half? Yeah, in the first half. And, yeah. and and for a team that is pushing for promotion, in third, and I, I know I might be contradicting myself a, le- a little bit because I'm saying the golfing class isn't massive between top and bottom, but it is third against 22nd or 23rd, yeah. whatever it was. So although there isn't a huge golfing class, there, should st- there is yeah. still clearly there is still a difference like a, there. Yeah. You know, and for them to be the only ones getting shots on target, yes, they're at home. Yes, they, they'd sold it out, which is the first time they'd done that in ages. Ooh, uh, I wonder why. I wonder why. But, uh, you know, um, it, it, but still, you need to be asserting your dominance, I think, because our everyone keeps, all the other fans keep banging on about our wage bill, being, oh, yeah, well, you should be where you are because of your wage bill. But, yeah, and uh, you know we back that off a little bit, but they're sort of right. You know, we're we're, mm. we're paying all this extra money for better players, so the better players should be better than the ones who are down the other end of the league, shouldn't they? You know, and and to get to not see a single shot on target, and to be seeding sixty five percent of the pe- possession in a half against a team who are in the relegation zone, and look like they're going to go down to the national league. 
it's not really good enough, is it? Say I it. So, I feel so, I feel sorry for people who are like in the relegation. I know let's I know Wrexham have done it, but do you know what I mean? I feel like oh, you know, you're in League Two when you're going down to National League. But they're not necessarily. I'm just no, you know, I know. But the teams that are and the teams yes. that will go down. Yeah, I do feel sorry for you. So you brushed off my point, and we're just moving on. Oh yeah, because it's a it's a it's a good point. Thanks. But I haven't really got anything to say about it. Okay, look, they they went ahead. 54 minutes, they went ahead. We had two chances to clear it. Felt like throwing something at the radio. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, Alexa. <laughs> yeah. um, look, they had... The ball went oh, forward. Ice, ice cream, cream man's here. <laughs> <Yeah. Hey>. uh, <laughs> uh, we're saying that out loud. I don't know if they can even hear it. It is pretty loud, to be it fair. It is pretty loud. I think he's parked right outside our house. Yeah. Um, look, we, again, we had two chances to clear that. And we didn't. McLean, don't know what he did. He had a complete air shot at it. Fell for the lad, Akinde. He hit it. Um, maybe Arthur could have done a little bit better. He got a hand on it. Might have been. I, I think he would have been disappointed not to touch that around the post. <laughs> yeah. Um, they went 1-0 up. Um, just a fact about that. He, he, that The guy who scored is a striker. Um, first goal this season. Wow. Yes. And he's a striker. He is. He's not playing all the time, but... First goal of the season, saved it up especially for us, that one. <laughs> no, yeah. it is. Um, it, it, it's unbelievable, to be honest. Uh, five minutes later, Mullen hit a volley wide. And my negative inner demon just <laughs> came rushing to the surface. And when he hit it, as soon as he hit it, I went, we're never going to score in this game. Which not. I can just see it. I, do, I just thought, I think... Pessimist. Yeah, but it was that that inner demon came out in me and just went, oh, just forget this game. Just move on. We've lost. We've lost. That's it. But a couple of minutes later, Barney, decent cross. Mullin on his own in the middle. 1-0. Barney's uh, contributing to a lot of our goals recently with his assists. I think he's... uh... He is. But I I do find... I'm going to say it. I do find his crossing a little bit haphazard at times. Yeah. Sometimes they're a little bit short. Sometimes they're a bit over hit. Sometimes they are bang on the money. And I, I, I don't think you ever really know what you're going to get with this crossing at the moment. Um, it, like I say, that one, pinpoint, right on Mullins' head, right in the centre of the box. Perfect. You couldn't have got a better cross. Um, a couple of them during the game, way over hit. <laughs> way over hit. So I, I think... I retract what I just said. <laughs> So, I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd, no, little... but he is, though. He's still, he you is. know, yeah. Yeah, he is. Look, 100 goals for Mullin. Huge, huge congratulations Amazing. on that. Absolutely. I think if you go over to um, the Wrexham AFC um, Twitter page, I think um, yesterday they were, uh, so that was obviously Sunday because it's today is Monday. Um, they were... Um, put in all the basically I think all 100 goals Where they? one after the other I think I don't know whether they're just pit, you know picking yeah. a few or whether they're literally do you have a favourite no. you can you can say no I mean it, you know with it, but I, do you have a favourite Mulling goal do you goal? know what it's as ridiculous as this sounds because yeah. he's such a fantastic goal scorer yeah. and ultimately that's his job yeah I don't really Remember, I don't really remember them. That's strange. That is, I, I, yeah, I get. I, it, it's a weird thing to say for somebody who scored a hundred goals in less than three yeah. years. But I sort of get what you mean because I'm, I'm sure every one of the goals were amazing. But I, I do have a favourite Paul Mullin goal. If I'm honest, it was the goal against Boreham Wood where he had it out wide. He brought it into the middle and uh, See. that is my favourite Paul Mullin goal. But yeah. there are goals that I re- that he scored that I really like the memory of, but they're boring. Like um, I. Re- <laughs> But they are yeah. like, uh, like the, the uh, like. How can how can one of his best goals be a penalty? But the <laughs> the penalty he scored against Oldham, 
Mm. You know, when when that won it for oh, us right yeah. at the end. That, but that's because he won it for But that's got really us. good memories yeah. attached to it. But you can, yeah. it, it, someone's, you know, what's the best goal he scored? I remember that penalty. No, that's ridiculous. That's a penalty. It's not, yeah, that's yeah. not any, yeah. Yeah, but the, the goal he scored against Boreham Wood is my, the, the first one he scored against Boreham See, Wood. See, Mendy's goal at Boreham Wood was my favourite. I don't remember Mendy scoring at Boreham Wood. Is it Boreham Wood? Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're talking about bullets. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's Your move head's on. not there, is it? So... Do you know what? My head's not been there for a very, very long time. <laughs> um, look, we pretty much took control after that. I do keep banging on about fitness. I just still think we're one of the fittest teams in the league. You did mention... I don't know who you mentioned that to, but you did mention that to somebody. Yeah, I, I, I think it might have been to Charles at the, the Doncaster game. We seem to have the best of the last half an hour of games. And I think it's because we're super fit. And I think teams run them run themselves out yeah, a little bit. Maybe. And I think we're just fitter than them. Uh, Doncaster was a classic example of that. It was all us the last half an hour. Um, uh, Colchester was another example of that. But, you know, we, it was just the last half an hour was just all us. Because I think they just gassed themselves out completely. Yeah, I mean, as exciting as all that is, you don't want... I'd rather early goals than late goals. Yeah, so would I. We've had this honest. conversation, I don't know how many times, yeah, I know. but yeah. Look, uh, were you starting to think we're going to have to settle for a point here? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it got to the point where I was thinking, oh, you know, what? We've, we've got a point. Yeah. You know, it's it's not it's not the end of the world. We're still where we are, da 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 But then... Super Max Cleaver pops oh, up. Oh, my God. Do you know what? I find weird that... Obviously, Paul Mullen got his 100th goal yeah. with Wrexham. Yeah. But everybody's talking about Max Cleaver. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was his first goal, his first league goal. It was, yeah. Um, with the EFL. Um, so, yeah, league goal. Um, yeah, on Saturday. Um, and I just think, and I was watching the, um, like, that, when the, uh, they put stuff on tw uh, Twitter after the game. Yeah, yeah. You know, the people that film it and stuff like that. Um, and I just saw, get, they were all clapping, da da da. And <laughs> James McLean, pushed uh max cleaworth like into the into the front of you yeah. know everyone because yeah. he deserved that he, his oh yeah. my god his goal was just it, it seemed to take an age to go in though he edited it and it was just sort of like it was look it felt like slow motion it, it wasn't a it wasn't a screamer was it no. but look who cares absolutely who cares so it was um paul mullen's 100th goal and Max Cleaworth's first league goal, which it was, was yeah. uh, he has know. scored one for us before. In case anyone's wondering why we keep saying first league goal, because it's his first goal in the league. The other goal he scored was um, in the FA Trophy against Gloucester, which I think we won five one. Not sure. I can't even remember that. No, but yeah. yeah so that's when he scored his first goal. Uh, but this is the first league goal. I think this is the first of many. I think he is. I think he's going to pop up with a few uh, every season now. And I think, um, yeah, I just I love him. I took it upon myself. Okay. I don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Um, but on Twitter on Saturday, I took it upon myself to declare Max Cleworth as our. Man of the match. I know, and I put. I actually put on there, I know Paul Mullins obviously scored his 100th goal. Yeah. And yes, people will probably go, oh, he should be getting man of the match um, if it was obviously given to away, ga away games. But I just think Max Cleworth... He I agree. It. I'm not going to disagree with you. Good, because <laughs> I do. I think he's he's just superb. He looks, he's he... so composed. Yeah. And for a twin, I don't ever remember, like... Speaking to twenty-one-year-old lads when I was twenty-one, them ever being that mature and composed because they probably weren't. <laughs> yeah, but I just find it bizarre that you know. Well, it, I don't find it bizarre. I find it a refreshing thing yeah. that somebody so young. He gives a good interview as he well. He does. The only downside to Max Cleworth is that he was born in Chester. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only thing. <laughs> but he's Welsh, I think though, isn't he? On his, if you go onto his bio on the Wrexham yeah. website, it, he's Welsh. Yeah. So yeah, we we he we've taken him in. He's he's yeah, Welsh. Yeah, it's, he's Welsh. It's he's fine. Welsh. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about that. Um, Tony uh, Tony Blank. 
uh, said we only need eight points now for, mo for automatic promotion. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Um, Sharky said Wrexham needs to be more consistent uh, with possession, build-up and quality shots on goal. If we can do that, we can win all of our final games. So some other results. Yeah, go on. Um, Stockport won 3-1 away at Sutton. Yeah. Uh, Mansfield lost 4-1 and Ryan's put this in capitals at home to Crawley. MK Dons won 2-0 away at Forest Green. Barrow lost 2-0 at home to Swindon and Crew drew 0-0 away at Accrington. Yeah, so we're now second in the league. <laughs> uh, we're four <laughs> points behind Stockport. Have, have they won it? I think so. Yeah. I th Do you know what? I think from early on in the league, in the season, sorry, I think you... You know, uh, they've been. In you the, felt it. Yeah, they've been in this league now. For two, <laughs> this is their second season in League yeah. Two. Um, I just think they they've kind of built up the momentum and just sticks in my throat a bit having to uh, yeah. having to watch them win the league again with us behind them. But anyway, uh, we're two ahead of MK Dons with a game in hand. Uh, we're three ahead of Mansfield in fourth, but they've got a game in hand over us. Uh, we're nine clear of Barrow and Crew uh, uh, in fifth and sixth, but Barrow have got a game in hand on us. Um, just a quick bit of news: Elliot Lee has been nominated for EFL Player of the Season alongside uh, David Davis Kilo Dunn and Jody Jones. Do you know what I mentioned as well? I was looking through the young Player of the Season, and I'm actually quite surprised that Max Cleaver's not there. But apparently. Is it because he hasn't played for a certain amount of games in the season? Or no, how does it work? No, no, that's not a rule. But that is the reason why. That It's not a rule you can't be nominated if you haven't played X amount of games. He just hasn't played enough games. That's the problem. That's sad. You know, you're going to have you're going to have people. I think he's only played. How many has he played? 15? Seems 16, like he's 17. played a lot. He does, but he hasn't. No. He's probably played a third of the season. So there are going to be plenty of young players out there. Who've played all season. Who've played all season. Well, and he's our, he's that, our young yeah, player it, of the of season. Of course he is. That's the reason why he's okay. not in there. That's yeah. fine. I did see you'd posted that out. and I, I But I, could, I can answer that for you. He just hasn't played enough. Yeah, but I, just, I just wanted to say yeah, uh, no. know, my opinion. I know, that's fine. You can um, have your I'm opinion. Gonna, what I'm going to start doing is if I put opinions... Chan's opinions. No, if I do put an opinion of my own, because yeah. obviously Ryan knows a lot more about football than I do, and sometimes I kind of just go off on my own and I just go, <laughs> da 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 and go, have a run, and then people come back and say, oh, um, how long have you supported Wrexham for? Yeah. And I'm like, well, actually. Yeah. Um, and I'm sick to death of people asking... Yeah or saying that um, about only supporting Wrexham since the takeover. Yes, probably in my case it, it is, but Ryan has been, and it really gets to my go, and I have to keep saying this, Ryan has been watching Wrexham since 1989. And I will keep saying it until people stop <laughs> saying, where were you when we were bleep? Yeah. It annoys me because you've been going with your dad. And I know it doesn't annoy you, but it annoys me. It doesn't annoy anyway, me. Anyway, if know. you want to get in touch with us, you can get in touch with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. But don't TikTok, annoy you. No, email, uh, uh, la, 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 email us at me, the wife from Wrexham AFC at gmail.com. Oh, that was hard work. We'll get. We'll run through the game. I know you're starting to struggle because I can see it in your eyes. But we've got <laughs> two games coming up this week. Massive games. Yeah. Um, we've got... Uh, we've got Crawley Town on Tuesday, the 9th of April, so 7.45 kickoff. That's a home match. Um, it's for, available for everybody on iFollow. Uh, the last league game was the 1-0 away win in October, where Ollie Palmer scored with that little dinky thing so that he hopefully. did. And Andy, Andy Cannon was sent off. Yeah, hopefully that won't happen. So no. hopefully we'll get the goal, but hopefully Andy Cannon um, will not. We'll stay on the pitch for the so, full So yeah, um, they won 4-1 away at Mansfield uh, last weekend. Uh, most points away in League Two in 24, uh, uh, sorry, in 2024 with 21 uh, points. Five more than their closest rival. See, uh, this, we come back to the same thing, don't we? We're talking about people hitting form. I mean, Crawley have taken more points away from home this year than any other team in League Two. I, they, they, I mean, it's not even close. Mm. To take 21 points away from home... That's pretty impressive. ...in a few months is crazy. 
And, you know, like I say, the, the nearest, the nearest that's people. That's just 2024. To, that's just, not this season, that's 2024. That's mad. I'm really so, like I, yeah, and we're playing them. Where are they? Away from home. Of course it is. You know, so yeah. again, another team that maybe falls <laughs> at the wrong time for us. So their last five, they've won three, drawn one, lost one. They're seventh on 65 points, pushing for a playoff spot. They've won 20, drawn five, lost 60 in the season. Their top scorer with 17 goals is Danny Orsi. That's like Danny. Orsi. That's, that's how you spell a female. Danny Lowe. His name's Danny Lowe. Oh, okay, then I'll let okay. him off then. All right, so that's... Yeah, yeah. Thanks. There we Predictions. Go. Crawley. You want me to go first? Yep, yeah, because your name is first. 2 now. Okay, I'm going to go with my... Uh, oh, we didn't mention, by the way. We'll mention this in a second. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go 2-1 again. Are you? Okay, mm -hmm. Sean got a prediction right for the Colchester game. Yeah. That's what she's about to tell everyone. Um, I'm not sure anyone cares, so we will move on. And then uh, on Saturday the 13th of uh, <laughs> April, we are home again to Forest Green Rovers. Um, and that is 3 p.m. kickoff, so that means that only international fans can watch on iFollow. Um, their last league game was one all draw at the New Lawn on the 27th of February, um, which is a last minute Pullman and penalty. You're going to have to take over because I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they lost 2 0 to MK Dons on Saturday. Uh, last five, they've <laughs> lost four and won one. Uh, they're bottom of the league with 36 points. Uh, this season, they've won nine, drawn nine, and lost 24. Top scorer, Matthew Stevens. Uh, he's not played since February, so after that, it's Kyle McAllister. Why with hasn't he played? Five. Injured or just because he's rubbish? Don't care. <laughs> um, prediction. Um, I'm going to go 2 1 again. Ah, yeah. I'm no, gonna... actually, no. I'm go well, no, I, my name's first. Go remember. on then. 3 0. Ah! I was going to get R do 3 1 then. Oh my God, why do you always just have to chuck like one difference? Because I was going to go. different, 4 3. I was going to go 3 1. Where? Are you? Uh, 3 0, but uh, you've gone 3 0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, quick shout out for Dragon Chat. It's a mental health peer support group. They run uh, weekly Zoom calls. Uh, they've got one on a Monday at 8 p.m. for women and they've got one on Thursday at 7 p.m. for men. The best thing to do is follow Dragon Chat Steve Lloyd on Twitter. <coughs> quiz time. Uh, look, I don't hold that much hope for you in the quiz <coughs> on a normal week. No. This week, I'm going to say it. Don't take offence. I ho I hold zero yeah. hope for you. You never know. Me being ill might actually help. Might be me. a superpower. I spat, spat everywhere. Yeah, lovely. Sorry, sorry I'll just wipe <laughs> that off. Okay. Okay. Number one. Mm -hmm. Elliot Lee made his hundredth and hundred and first appearance for Wrexham last week. Okay. But how many other players in our current squad have played over a hundred games? Just Pretty a number. Young. Just a number. Two. You're going for two. One. Two. Two? Two. Do you want to change again? No. Okay, no, that's incorrect. It's seven. Oh. <laughs> Question two. <laughs> Name them. Oh, get lost. Three for a point. There's seven in total. So Luke Young. Uh, Luke Young is correct. Ben Toza. Correct. Jordan Davis. Correct. That's your three. Let's see how many more you can get. Uh, Paul Mullen. Yes, correct. Um, uh, make sure, make your sure answer of two look a bit silly now. Now you can name them all. Don't <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Owen O'Connell. Incorrect. Tom O'Connor. Incorrect. Should we stop? Callum McFadden. Incorrect. <laughs> Rob Lington. Oh, I don't even know. If, I don't even remember what he looks like. Yeah, is he in the squad? I don't he's know. But anyway, anyway, there. anyway, he's there. He's yeah, there. He's there. He's there. Uh, Ollie Palmer oh, yeah. and James Jones oh. are the other ones. See, again, okay. I forgot. Wait until James Jones comes back. And, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, number three. Paul Mullin hit his 100th goal for Wrexham on Saturday. But how many other players from the current squad are in the top 100 all-time top scorers? Just a number. You can name them if you want to show off. Two. Two? Who, if you were going to name them two, who would you say? Elliot Lee. Yeah. Maybe just one. Uh, yeah, just one, actually. One, Elliot Lee. Yeah. Yeah, incorrect. It's three. Oh. It's Ollie Palmer, Jordan Davis and Elliot Lee in the top 100. 
Okay, number four. Jack Marriott came on as a sub on Saturday for his 13th appearance for the club. But how many games has he started? Two. Two? But it's one, in it? Which no, one I'm going to go with two. One or two? Two. I'll let you change if you want. Two! Okay, it's wrong, it's three. <laughs> Number oh. five, Ben to Tozer came off the bench for a fleeting appearance last Tuesday. But who were our opponents the last time he started a game on the 10th of February? No options. Do, do. I don't know. You don't know? I can't remember February. what I did last week. We lost, if that helps you. Was it home or away? Uh, that would make it too easy. So because we know, haven't like Accrington. We didn't lose that. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> Bradford. Oh, so yeah. we lost at home to Bradford. That was his last game. Look, I am going to get Sean in bed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing like that. Come on. Come on now. It's don't a have family to show. You don't have to make it all like that, <laughs> do you? Right. Sorry. Right. Come on. I, I survived. She did survive. I survived. I was at a point where I thought I was going to have to do the show on my own, mm. which I wasn't looking forward to. I would have had to... Shut up. You were going to... You were going to love every second of it. Because he said to me, he goes, if you can't do it the whole hour, then I'll do it on my own. Oh. He would have put a big scratch mark <laughs> through the wife and it would have just been I me. wouldn't have. Look, it's me and you. It's, it's me. This is an hour thing, so <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to do it on my own. So, yeah, but, but I'm I would have if I had to. Yeah, I'm but. dedicated to the cause. Well done. Um, but I'm hoping that I'm going to feel better because I j I've got to go back to work tomorrow. Uh, yeah. On Monday, even. Yeah. Oh, God, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just... Look, we'll just leave it there. We'll leave it there. <laughs> and uh, we will see you all hopefully on Tuesday um, where you can join us for a half time and a full time show live from the race course. Uh, just head over to our YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe. The preview of the game didn't quite go to plan, so we need no. to kind of think a bit further into how we're going to do that because the yeah. signal was shocking in Doncaster. It was, but we're look, we're back at home on Tuesday, so, so we know that we can do it. There'll be a halftime show, a full time show. Uh, the same thing will be the case on Saturday, halftime show. So just head over to our YouTube channel, subscribe to us, and just join us on the lives and and comment, and we'll answer Ping all your the questions. Bell. Click the bell, because then you'll get notified when we're Ping going the live. Bell. I don't know what you call it. Press All right, the bell. Grandma. <laughs> we'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.